So last night my um, headlights went off. Um, so now I have something else that I need to check on my car. But before I do that, I figured that it might be a good idea to do the parallel circuits in a nutshell video where I explain parallel circuits. And again, we're only using two equations, Ohm's law and the power equation. So we know voltage is equal to the current times the resistance and power is equal to the current times the voltage. And from here you can derive other equations that you can use to solve. So what are the characteristics of parallel circuits? And a note, DC. Um, so first thing is that there are multiple parts for path for current to flow. Current splits in inverse proportion to resistance in a branch. So if we look at the example here, so current that comes from the battery, it splits in this point in two. It can go through here and here. So there are multiple paths for current to flow. Two, voltage is constant across each branch. So we know that in here, the voltage across this complete circuit, if we look at the two points, is three volts. So this branch is going to have three volts, and this branch is going to have three volts, and this circuit is going to have to drop three volts, and this circuit is going to have a voltage drop of three, too. So keep that in mind because that is very important to know. So again, the voltage that is applied to the whole circuit is three volts. The voltage if, if that w this branch will have to drop is three volts and the voltage that this branch will have to drop is three volts. So moving on to find the total resistance, we find it by two methods, either product over sum, and this one applies for two resistors only or the reciprocal method. And this one is very easy with a calculator and uh, because of this little function here, X minus one. So all you have to do is put the numbers in there and press that button multiple times and you will get the result. And um, or the reciprocal method, which is a uh, for more than two resistors. So one, one divided by one over one plus one over two plus one over three dot 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 until we get to whatever number of resistors we have in the in parallel in the circuit. The total current is equal to the sum of current through each brand. So and this is what is called Kirchhoff's current law. So the total current, this will be the total current, the one that is coming here, and then you have I1 and I2. So the total current will be equal to I1 plus I2. Total resistance in the circuit will be smaller than the smallest resistance in the circuit. Now I got two examples. So let's look at first example. First example, we have a voltage source of three volts, and so we have a resistor of 1,000 ohms, and we have a resistor of 330 ohms. We're going to find the total resistance, the total current, the current through the I1 and the current through I2. So the total resistance we can find by either of those two methods. I did it with both methods. So uh, this is the reciprocal method and this is the product over sum method. And in both cases, I get 248.12 ohms. Yeah, so don't forget the units. It's important, especially when you're doing engineering. engineering. I mean, you should know that this is some, so, but I always put your units. And um, so we have 248.12 ohms. And in here, we can see that the torque resistance is less than the smaller resistor, which in this case is 330 ohms. So we are good on that. And um, now that we know the torque resistance, we can find the total current that is coming out here. And IT will be here. And um, the total current is. 3, 3 volts divided by 248.12 give those 0 0.12 amps. What we're doing in here by using the total resistance there is we're simplifying this circuit from two branches. We're saying, um, let me put it this way, 3 volts. We are pretty much replacing two resistors and just looking at it from one resistor. So from this, we we find the total resistor and we find RT and RT is just now one resistor and we can apply the same voltage, um, the same Ohm's law to find IT, which will be here, IT, I1, it goes through this branch and I2 goes through this other branch. 
So yeah. So we find IT is equal to 0 0.12 amps. To find I1, we can just say since the voltage is constant across this branch, so we know we can just take three volts divided by 1,000 ohms and three volts divided by three 330 ohms, and we can find each of the coherence that goes through each of the branches. And in the end, we can do a check just to make sure that we did it okay and adding both coherence equals to the total coherence. Now let's look at another example because this is an example of two resistors. We can do and look at an example of three resistors. And again, same concept, three volts. Uh, and we have a resistor of 1000 ohms and we have a resistor of 330 ohms and a resistor of 220 ohms. And in this case, we can use the product of our sum, so we use a reciprocal method. We put it in there, we get the result of 116.61 ohms. We check, and we know that this total resistance is less than the smallest resistor, so we're good. And we can calculate the total current, 3 volts divided by 116.61, give us 0 0.26, 0 0.26, 0 0.026 amps, sorry. And then um, we can calculate two the coherent to each of the branches. So to calculate I1, 3 divided by 1000, to calculate I2, 3 divided by 330, and to calculate I3, 3 divided by 220, we give us zero, approximately 0 0.014. We can add it together and we can verify that the total coherent is 0 0.026 amps. And again, what we're doing again is we're simplifying this and by finding the torque resistor, we're going, making this from three branches, looking at it from the perspective of one resistor in the circuit. And that's how we get the information that we need. And application of parallel circuits, they are highly useful. And right now, again, my, my car damaged the headlights and that's why I'm making this video of parallel circuits in a nutshell. So, yeah, so application, headlights in your car, they are connected in parallel. That's why you can have one light bulb going off and the other one still working because there's still another pass for current to flow. And electric outlets in your house, they're all connected in parallel, which means that even if you, if a breaker breaks down in, in your house, you will have electricity in other parts of your house. Any questions uh, that we're going to do next? And uh, you can check them in here I'll be I will try to answer them or questions that you have or if you have any ideas for videos in the next step in the next video we're going to be looking again at my you see my little creation here that that I built with where I have the resistors and we're going to compare the values and see what we get and uh, we're going to connect the circuits in parallel and we're going to just look at the values and see what we get and verify with a digital multimeter um, but yeah um hope you like this video and please like and share if you want to honestly and again i'm just trying to make this so that way people can learn and something useful and not possibly apply it you know uh to me this has been helpful because i can be i've been able to fix my own issues with my car based on this knowledge of how electricity works because once you know that it's su super easy you know um Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video on part two. Bye.